And we're joined now by another legendary player, a le le legendary Laker as well, Hall of Famer, all-star as a player who went on to coach the Lakers as well. Let me start with Jerry West with I'm so sorry for your loss um, to you and also the Laker family. And you were very instrumental in Kobe's early career. And what was your reaction when you first heard the news? Well, you know, first of all, I hope it isn't true because a lot of times you see the reports and they identified a, a plane and then, I mean, a helicopter that went down and, and obviously uh, someone said it was Kobe's helicopter that he had flown frequently throughout the years, even when he was a player flying from his home to the games and to practice. And um, after that, it really was a retreat into the background, my association with him, uh, helping him arrive here in Los Angeles, watching him grow as a player, and being like a surrogate father for him. Uh, when he was 17 years old, couldn't drive. My son Ryan used to drive him to the practices. He'd never been in the 405 freeway, never had that horrible experience. And then to start thinking about some of the intimate things that I had done with him to um, help him through the hurdles of a 17-year-old kid trying to become an NBA player and take that to enormous amount of talent he had and to put it within a framework that would help the Lakers be successful for so many years. 20 years career. Um, uh, one of the worst days of my life, the only thing I can compare it to is I had a brother killed in Korea, and I'm just devastated by this news. And to watch him transform his life and career from this iconic player to have an enormous career in the media business, and to see him with his young kids his young daughters, the joy that was in their eyes looking at their father, who obviously they loved, to the attention he paid to them, to his getting involved in prom promoting women's basketball. Now, this was a man for all seasons. He was a, more than an iconic basketball player. He was someone who inspired millions of fans, not here in this state, not here in the United States, all over the world. All around he the world. He arguably was the most pop, all around yeah. the world, but yeah. particularly starting in Asia. Um, he was beloved. Um, you know, you see certain figures, uh, uh, Magic Johnson with his personality, and Kobe's was completely different. Irvin, that big smile, inviting attitude and him walking around the street, people coming up to him. This guy was like a Pied Piper. People would follow him everywhere just to look at him, to touch him, for him to say hello. Uh, for me, this is a god-awful day. It's, it's so apparent that it is. It, it's, it's, it's written all over your face in the eloquent way that you spoke about Kobe, and he it's definitely so multifaceted. You were the general manager at the time in, in 1996. He's a 17-year-old kid in Philadelphia. You orchestrated the deal with Charlotte to bring him to Los Angeles. Can you just, what was it about him, a 17-year-old kid from Philly? What was it about him that you knew he was special? Well, I think you can see special talent in people, OK? A lot of people have spe special talent but they waste it or they never use it. And I think, Michael, in football today, we see some players that you just shake your head, my gosh, what an opportunity you've had and you're ruining it. We well, didn't ruin, ruin his opportunity. He was never going to give up. And to, to watch the growth spurt with him, to watch the trials and tribulations, because in practice, he would dribble through five guys and make a dunk, OK? You can't win that way. And it took him a while to understand that there was a process for him to get involved and play on a team in a team that could win. He became the leader of the pack. Uh, watching him and Shaquille O'Neal was watching Superman and, and the um, and Spider-Man. 
Kobe Bryant was Spider-Man. He could go through holes, do things that no one else could do. And he, I think because he started so young, that he resonated with so many people, the young kids who have hopes and dreams like he did. Um, watching him go to a summer league game, okay? The place was jam-packed, and my son relayed a story to me just today about, and I obviously was there, I think he scored 29 points as a 17-year-old kid. And after the game, he remarked, remarked to my son, boy, that was really easy. Hmm. And you start to think, think to yourself, 17 years of age, you can't even sign a contract yet. <laughs> uh, but he, he was just, he was just, the more you're around him, people saw this serious side. He was fun. Um, you know, he could laugh, could laugh at himself. But as I say, he brought joy to so many young kids mm. <laughs> that, uh, that had the same admiration and same desire to do something unique. Jerry, he, the, he talked about it. Jerry, the emotion is, is plain on your face and in your voice, and we know it's a very, very difficult day for you and for all those in the Laker family and across the world who have a passion for basketball. We thank you so much, Jerry, for sharing thank some you. of your memories on such a difficult evening with you. We appreciate it, Jerry. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.